Welcome, investigator. Evil is on the rise. Crime is escalating. Our mission is to eliminate the crime by exposing evil, examine why it manifests, and highlight the brave souls that confront it every day. Join us as we work together to bring justice to every victim. Welcome to All Things Crime. Here's your host, Jared Bradley. All right. Following here is the radio interview that I had, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So again, please subscribe and make some comments down there. And if you know anything about this case that that isn't covered in in this podcast uh, or in in this episode, then let us know. We'd we'd love to love to hear from you guys. All right. Here we go. The Opinion Line on Courts 96 FM. Jared Bradley is a former soldier and scientist who's gained the nickname the DNA guy. He has pioneered a piece of equipment called MVAC. It's a system which extracts DNA and he believes that it could help to solve the killing of Sophie Toscan Duplantier uh, and he's out there waiting to be called in by the cold case reinvestigation team. He joins me now uh, from Utah. Jared, tell me first, if you would please, what MVAC is and what it can do. Good morning. Oh, good morning to you too. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to come on. The MVAC is essentially a, a sterile wet vacuum. So imagine like a, a carpet cleaner where it sprays a solution down onto a surface and then vacuums up whatever's there. So uh, it doesn't have brushes like a carpet cleaner would, but the combination of the spray and the vacuum creates a little mini hurricane down there at the surface, and that enables it to collect DNA that is down in the cracks and crevices of a surface that uh, you know swabbing and other methods just can't get to. It might have been there for a very long time, so can the machine dislodge it so it can be, be removed? Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly how it works. So uh, if, if the amazing thing about DNA is if the evidence is stored properly, then it can last for a long time. Like uh, we've, we've had cases that I think our record right now is 56 years old. Wow. So, yeah, the, the, the DNA was trapped in, in the seam of a, a sleeve of a, of, of a shirt. And, yeah, 56 years old. You know, most evidence lockers are climate controlled, and so if it's in a if it's in a relatively dry, uh, cool place, then that DNA can last for a long time. Fifty six years ago, there was no DNA technology. No, no, yeah, it wasn't even a, a thought then. You know, DNA didn't really come onto the scene until really mid nineties, late late nineteen nineties. So, uh, and and I think it wasn't really starting to get sensitive until the 2000s so uh that yeah the case i, I want to say is 1967 or 66 something like that wow well and you know if you manage to extract dna from something like a, a shirt that's 50 something years old will that evidence then be admissible in, in, a, in a modern day court that's the fascinating question you know i'm not familiar w- with the ireland courts but uh, here in the U.S., absolutely. You know, it's is again the chain of custody is important. Uh, as long as it's been maintained by law enforcement, then sure. And I'm sure Ireland has the exact yeah. same thing. So if there's something to work off, you can work with it. Your interest in this particular case, I'm sure, I don't need to rehash the history with you. It, how did you come to hear of the Sophie Tosk and Duplantia case in the first place, Jared? Well. I was actually contacted by uh, a couple of different news agents, you know, or newspapers, and they they kind of brought the brought it to my attention. And you know, of course, we have interest in any case that we can help solve anywhere in the world. You know, we've we've been all over the place. Uh, you know, South Africa and Singapore. You know, all, you name it, we've just about been there. And cases like this, typically. The detectives have have gone down every avenue they can possibly think of and and explored wherever the evidence has taken them and wherever the story has taken them. You know, they've explored it to and and just hit dead ends on on the wherever they are. And, you know, DNA with the way that it's 
that it's uh, advancing, especially the, as technology gets more and more sensitive, it's just reopened a lot of cases like this. And so uh, the similarities between, uh, you know, this particular case that we're, we're talking about and some of the other ones like Crystal Bislanowicz, uh is a, is a case here in, in the United States that was a cold case for almost 18 years. Tell me a bit about that case, because I know you worked on it and you, it, it was a breakthrough. It was a similar case to, to Sophie. Yeah, yeah. The uh, not only in the time frame, but also the the evidence uh, and the the murder weapon, especially because it was a, a several granite rocks that the victim was beaten to death. She was she was like seventeen, uh, wayward teen, and just having having problems, you know, with uh, prostitution and and drugs and things. And um, one night she just kind of disappeared, and they. A farmer and his son uh, found her the next day uh, on the side of a, a river, kind of a river bank in uh, Utah, and, and she had been bludgeoned to death with two rocks in particular that were big enough that they could be held like a man could hold it with one hand, mm-hmm. uh, but small enough that uh, you know they, they could do a lot of damage. So they they had tried to swab several times um but you know swabbing it's physics you you the swab material just can't get into those little cracks and crevices where a lot of that dna is going to be and but the mvac again with the solution vacuum combination uh is able to penetrate deeper and uh cause that dna material you know that you in this case is probably skin cells to dislodge from the rock and then be collected, and so that's how they got the that's how they got the profile. So you were able to, your machine was able to lift from the rock DNA of who had handled it on the night of the murder. Correct. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and they had um, in swab. Well, it, just in DNA in general, with how sensitive things are now, you need about a half a nanogram. I think it's like one one millionth of a gram to, to actually produce a profile. So the MVAC collected 21 nanograms, so 42 times more than what they needed to produce a good profile. So, yeah, there was plenty of DNA there, that, but the swabbing just, you know, it's not the swab's fault. It's it's just a physical device. It just physically can't get in there. Now, you believe that the MVAC would help if you could use it on the, the evidence collected in uh, Sophie's murder, correct? Well, I think it's a good chance. I haven't been able to actually see the evidence. Typically, I, I don't like to say yes, it'll help until you know I've I've actually had a chance to examine the evidence or or somebody else that is a like an M- MVAC expert. So, you know, the detectives ultimately need to make that decision. But in in cases like this where they've tried everything else, they've they've reached a point where uh, if they don't do something, di- you know, different than what they've done in the past, then it's just going to stay a cold case. Well, that's the perfect example of a case where they've then turned to the MVAC. At least they have a shot. Because it was a particularly brutal crime. The the poor woman was bludgeoned to death. Uh, there's got to be DNA somewhere. I would have thought as a layman anyway, Jared. I would too, and just just what I've read, uh, the different stories, and apparently she was down at the end of her driveway, some somewhere around there, and down near the road. Yeah, she she lived in a house up on a hill, and she was found down by the road. Yeah. Well, if she's bludgeoned to death with, uh, you know, a rock or a slab, and then when, whenever the the killer got done with that, he picked up a, a cinder block. Is that correct? That's right. Uh, and, and you know, beat on her some more. Uh, that that alone uh, that tells me a lot, yeah. uh, just based on on what I'm what I've seen in the past. Whoever the killer was, the brutality of it alone tells me that this person knew the victim. At least that's my you know I'm not an investigator, but uh, to me and just taking experience of, of seeing this in the past, it, this isn't just like a random happenstance like that. It was a frenzied, vicious attack. There there is a cold case investigation underway, as I'm sure you're aware. 
are you formally or informally offering your services to the cold case team? And by the way, that cold case team includes someone who only recently helped to solve a 40-year-old murder case using trace DNA. So the, the expertise is also on the cold case team. Are, are you offering your services, Jared? Well, of course, we're, we're always interested in, in helping wherever we can. If the detectives determine that uh, the MVAC would be of, of uh, benefit to, to use on the evidence, then, yeah, I'd, I'd love to help. If the detectives want to work with us, then we'd love to help. I'm particularly fascinated by the, the nature of your technology. The time, time doesn't actually matter. A 57-year-old short, you had another 43-year-old murder. Was it in Texas? Yeah, that one was just solved uh, about a year ago. Uh, A little 12-year-old girl was kidnapped. Um, She was swimming with her brothers, and then they had left a few minutes before her. And a guy, he was a serial killer, serial rapist, uh, grabbed her, threw her in a truck, and then drove about three miles away to a field and uh, raped and killed her. And they found her about six days later. She was wearing a T-shirt and a swimsuit. They had Again, they had tried the the more traditional methods of of swabbing and i talked to uh the csi that did it and she said she literally was like using her fingers to to pry apart the the fabric and trying to swab every last inch of that t-shirt uh but it wasn't until she used the mvac that she got the profile so it just it just gets magnitudes more of whatever is on that surface than what a swab can so when you're talking just minute amounts of, of DNA material, then uh, in, in cases like that, it's just critical that you collect it. Jared, your, your device sounds fascinating. The science behind it is, is amazing stuff. And if we could use it or if it could be used to solve this horrific case in our community, I think a lot of people would be very grateful uh, to you. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Your attention today brings us one step closer to exposing and eliminating the evil that brings crime to our communities. Hit subscribe and share this episode. Together, we will bring justice to every victim.